part three in our series on rebuilding the electronic Rochester Quadrajet. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is take this old accelerator pump. We're going to pop off the clip in the spring because those didn't come with our rebuild kit. There's nothing special about that spring. You can put it on either way. Here's our new pump. And Dylan is now compressing the spring and he's got the clip and there's a, a skinny part on that on that rod where it sort of necks down and he's sliding the clip on. And that pump is ready to go. Now we're going to install a check ball with the screw that holds it down. Kind of goes in the body, in the in the middle body. And if you think of the carburetor in three layers, there's a base, there's a middle, and there's a there's a top, which is also called the air horn. We're starting with the middle section, and um, that ball didn't drop in immediately, but we rolled it around, and now he's putting the screw in there, and he's going to tighten it down. I'm using an abbreviated format here where I know that nobody wants to sit there and watch us screw in each and every screw. So, you know, just, just know a couple of things. Almost every single screw, we start it by hand, and you can assume that we fully tightened each and every one. Now we're about to install the fuel filter. It's spring first, then fuel filter with the open end pointing out of the carburetor. And the one thing that you need to know is there's a little black check valve that we did not install in this filter the first time, as shown in the video. But later we changed our minds and we did come back and put it in because it serves a useful purpose. It keeps gasoline from working its way back out of the carburetor. Okay, the part that we're going to work on now is installing the needle and the float and everything that controls how much fuel is able to, to come into that bowl. Okay, we're showing the washer that needs to go on to the seat before it is threaded into the base. Okay, there's that, that bronze seat and here comes the, the washer going on to it. Turns out that just the fact that it kind of gets crooked on there makes it not fall off while you're putting it in there. He's putting it in and starting it by hand, then using a tool where we grabbed a small key with a pair of pliers to have something that was wide enough and thin enough to turn that seat and thread it fully into there. Okay, so we're placing a spring. And here comes the float. There's a rod that goes through the float that the float pivots on. And now he's hanging the needle off of the float. Okay, so if you really pay attention here, you'll see that the clip is not being put through either one of those holes in the float. It simply comes in from the side and hangs there. What keeps it in place is sitting down into the the tube of that seat. That keeps it from moving left, right, forward, or backwards. But the clip itself is simply suspended from the side of the float. Here comes another spring. Okay, now we're adding the idle mixture solenoid to the carburetor. This is what makes the first letter of this carburetor, the E4ME, B and E. This is what makes it an electronic quadrajet as opposed to all the others. So this is what makes this carburetor special. So what we're going to do now is there's a bolt that I'm pointing to. We're going to tighten it down all the way and then we're going to back it off a specific number of turns. There's a half. There's one turn. There's another half. The drama is killing us. There's two full turns. There's another half. Three full turns. There's another half. And there we go. So we backed it off three and a half turns 
And that's what the rebuild instructions said to do. What I'm pointing out with this, the screwdriver here now is that the, the height of the solenoid as installed correctly is approximately a tenth of an inch below the level surface of this body. The next thing we need to do is get the, the float adjusted correctly. So with the float fully depressed, there's a gauge that comes with your rebuild kit that says just how far below the surface it's supposed to be. Um, I believe that measurement was 11 30 seconds and it didn't measure quite right for us. So what I'm doing with my finger there, while one person holds down one end of it, I'm pushing it down and deliberately bending the bar um, in kind of in the middle, somewhere around the pivot point. It's got a section that's designed to bend. I'm bending it until the the depth of the car of the of the float when it's fully raised is 11 30 seconds, which is what our rebuild instruction said to do. Okay, so there are, we were tightening down the one screw that holds down that blue connector for the solenoid. And here comes the plastic piece that surrounds the solenoid and everything else. And what I'm pointing out with the screwdriver there is that as long as everything's installed correctly, the surface of that plastic piece should be about level with the metal body. And here comes the reinstallation of this plate, which the only reason we took it out is so that we could soak it in cleaner and get it looking nice. It's uh, about as simple as anything could be just to sit you know, set it back in there and push it down. It stops firmly, no adjustment needed. And here comes a sequence where we're reassembling the choke, the choke mechanism, the choke arms, uh, the rods that connect to the choke. There are a number of pieces involved and because this is a trim down, slim down video, you got to watch pretty carefully, but we're trying to show you each piece how it's oriented as it goes in. Occasionally I will include the struggle of placing a piece just so that you'll know it's not just you and to kind of show, okay, this is what was actually involved in placing that piece. So with one hand and a pair of needle nose pliers, we're holding that one piece in place while running the part coming in from the side through it. And now you can see as you wiggle it, it moves that it moves that rod up and down. Then there's another piece that comes along, slides over it, and kind of um, fits within it. Then there's a seal. So there's a seal that um, we had to actually slide our assembly back out. I placed it on the shaft there, and now we're sticking it back in. And just through, you know, not not forcing it, but just kind of wiggling it in there. Okay, here's another one of the levers, one of the little intricate pieces of machinery that, that is always visible outside the carburetor. Um, that's how you put it on there. Then you got to put the, the choke body back on. That should be the last of the components that, that requires the choke body to be off. I'm pretty sure this is final assembly. Okay, so there's another seal. It goes around that same center rod and it's sealing the, you know, the choke housing to that rod. I'm just working it in there with the, the tip of a flat bladed screwdriver, just getting it all pushed in nice and good. Okay, so here comes the little arm that the, the choke coil actually moves. There's a kind of a hook shape on the choke coil and you can see that there's a there's a bar that sticks out towards us that uh, the choke coil actually pushes on to choke or release um, the choke, depending on the temperature. And since this is an electric choke, it really depends on you know how long the key has been turned on. Now we're screwing everything together. That particular tool is a Torx, a selection of different Torx drives. So obviously that was a Torx head screw. Um, at this moment, we're showing placing the gastic, gasket around the solenoid connector. I believe this is called the air valve, and there's a couple of old O-rings on there 
The rebuild kit did include new O-rings, so we're just slipping the old O-rings off. Um, what, we're what we're actually using there is a very fine bladed screwdriver to do that. Okay, so the, the two replacement O-rings are not the same. Um, this is the fat one. It goes on first. The groove that it sits in is a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit deeper. And here comes the second, slightly skinnier O-ring. Now just to help everything slide in there um, and to make sure that we don't damage any O-rings, we just put a very brief spray of WD-40 on there. And it actually, when fully screwed down, will stick out the bottom. So we're picking up the, the air horn there and screwing it in with it held off you know, held off the surface so that, you know, nothing gets damaged, nothing gets bent. But it doesn't stick out very far, and I don't think that that's really something you have to do. There we are, showing how that, that um, little spring-loaded guy sticks out the bottom. Now, here's another item that we probably didn't need to take off as part of our rebuild. But we did, and we soaked them, and we cleaned them, and they definitely look better when we put them back on these butterfly plates. You know, we are using different screwdrivers at different points because, you know, as I was explaining to Dylan, you basically want to use kind of the fattest straight slot screwdriver that you can in each straight slot screw, it minimizes the chance of tearing up the screw. Okay, so here comes the throttle position sensor. Um, if you were paying attention, you saw him slip in a spring, and then here comes the connector. It slides, kind of slides down into a slot, and because there's a spring underneath it, you'll see that when he's pushing down on it with his thumb, you know, it'll go down briefly and then pop back up. And then here comes that accelerator pump. Since it is a rubber part and it's sliding in a metal, a metal cylinder, we just sprayed a little bit of WD-40 on there to keep it lubricated until you know the carb is reassembled and gets gasoline in it. So now we're ready to put the gasket on, the gasket that goes on top of the middle section and, and underneath the air horn. And here comes a, a, a spring. This spring uh, is not the same at both ends. It has a small end and a big end. And I'm pretty sure what he's doing is placing the bigger end down first, leaving the smaller end on top. And I do not remember what this piece is called, but it's, it sits inside the solenoid. It is what is actually activated by the solenoid. The solenoid generates an electromagnetic field that yanks down on this guy and he presses down on a couple of needles and provides a, a, an electromechanical way to regulate the, the idle mixture. It's actually some interesting crossover engineering during that phase when we were moving from all mechanical to pretty much all electronic. Okay, that green rod is a very important guy. He pushes down on the throttle position sensor. So what we're doing is kind of a cheat. It saves you from having to pop that arm out and remove that arm temporarily. Um, we set that green rod into the air horn from the bottom. We taped it in position so that it'll be held while we place the air horn on here. And then the, uh, the lever that actuates with, with the throttle, we don't have to pop it out. We don't have to disconnect it. Um, it was just a small time saver for us. So the green rod activates the throttle position sensor. By the way, that is a brand new throttle position sensor. It costs about $8 on eBay. Um, I highly recommend getting one. You don't want to have gone to all this trouble and then find out that, oh, by the way, my throttle position sensor was no good. I have to take this all back apart and all because I wasn't willing to spend $8. It's worth it. 
So what I'm doing now is holding down the spring-loaded things with my screwdriver while the air horn goes on. When it's very close to the gasket surface, you can slide the screwdriver out and everything stays in place. Okay, there's a number of screws that are going to be installed during this sequence. They're all <clears throat> Torx head screws and they're all the same diameter. And if you pay attention, they're mostly the same length. There are a couple of long ones that come in later. So I, I don't know if this is really necessary or not, but I sort of treated it like you would treat um, installing a, a wheel on a car. In other words, you don't just go around tightening lug nuts in a pure circle. You're supposed to do it in a star pattern. And so we did with these, these um, Torx head screws. Um, we sort of start, started at the center and worked our way out, and we did it in a kind of a made-up star pattern. I don't know if that makes any difference or not, but it made us feel better and made us feel like, okay, you know, we're not going to run into any weird problems from torquing one side completely first before the other or tightening it in a circle. It may not have made any difference at all. So what I'm doing now is just testing each of the spring-loaded plungers, making sure that they work smoothly. They did, so we're moving on. Here comes a little bracket that is going to work the the choke valve yeah so this there's a rod that's that's actuated by the choke it's got this little piece that connects it to that butterfly valve and that's that's what the choke actuates when it's cold it causes that flap to be closed here comes a couple of needles that are attached to that arm and he's just kind of carefully getting them to seat down in there And that's what the screw looks like that's going to hold those guys down. And now we're showing, you know, how it works when you actuate that, the, the secondaries. Here's a little vacuum actuator. Um, we didn't replace it, but I wanted to know if it was any good. So hooked up a, a length of hose. And I'm just doing this purely with my lungs, uh, sucking it in, blowing out on it, and it's working fine and it doesn't appear to be leaking so we simply reinstalled it okay here's a rod that you pretty much have to put this rod on before you attach that that gold colored actuator here are the screws that hold that actuator on and here we are tightening them down and that rod is in place. So now we've flipped the carburetor over. We are going to put the base on. And there are certain rods that you need to connect, you know, at the right time or else you'll be redoing part of this. So we're showing which rod goes in right now at this stage. Put that sucker in there, flip it over. And we're going to carefully slide it on. I believe it's held on by about three screws from the bottom. Screw number one. Screw number two. And screw number three. Let me flip it over. And here come two more screws. These are the really long guys. Now this is the back of the carburetor tightening those down good and here comes a couple of screws that go inside there and um, just don't want to forget those and now there's a, a screw that it, it holds the sprint there's an adjustable spring that has to be held in place We'll be coming back to that guy later. Now we're inst showing the installation of a rod that has um, has a little bump on the end to keep it from coming out. It has to be put in um, at a specific angle. That rod is involved with the accelerator. So ultimately your throttle linkage connects to the guys in the foreground 
works that rod, pushes up on the rod, which seesaws and pushes the accelerator pump down, forces gas in there, and that's what makes your car take off. There's a clip that holds that rod in place. Here comes a spring, one of several that we're about to install, and the arm that it, that it sits on coming right after it. And notice how it slides onto that rod. This is one of those things you have to do it in the right sequence or you'll end up taking it apart and redoing it. So the spring hooks on that, that little metal piece and you got to wrap it all the way around. And then the, the trick was, okay, how do we get it to come all the way around? You know, we've got fat fingers and we have to get it through this little, little slot area. So we got some really skinny needle nose pliers and he's bringing it all the way past that bar and hooking it on there. And now it's going to stay in place. Okay, so here comes another spring that sits on the outside of it. The trick with this guy is, as discussed during disassembly, is that the, the shaft that it's going onto has to be at the right angle. And then you can just pop it on there just like you just did. And then here comes the other end of that spring. It's just a straight little bar. It's not hooked or anything. Just grab it and bring it, bring it around and it slides into a notch on that arm. Okay, so now it's time to install the idle mixture screws. What you basically do is you run them down all the way until they seat. Not hard, not damaging them, but fully seated. Then you back them off four and a half turns. So we're going to show that just for thoroughness. There's a half a turn, one turn, one and a half turns, two turns, two and a half turns, three turns, three and a half turns, four turns, and four and a half turns. And that's the official recommendation of the carburetor rebuild guide. So that's what we went with, went with and that's what we stuck with. We never did come back and adjust it. Um, to be honest with you, my nose told me that the car was idling a bit rich, but um, we we sold the car shortly after that, never made time to come back and, and adjust it. But it idled beautifully, so it's a very good starting point. Okay, so now it's time to move on to the choke. Um, we stuck it in there, and then we're able to twist it to the left because that's the direction in which the coil with the hook on the end of it will start to hook on that arm inside that inside the choke housing. We had a little bit of a struggle getting the the clips to stay on the right outside ledge of the brown um, of the brown uh, plastic choke, but it wasn't a big deal. So three clips, three screws. Each one of those clips kind of sits down on a little plastic ledge. And moving on. So um, there was an old nasty vacuum hose here. We have bought some new vacuum hose from O'Reilly Auto Parts. I believe it was 59 cents a foot. Pretty, pretty good deal. Uh, just to get it to slide on easily, we just put a little square to WD-40 on each, each end and slide it on there. Slide it onto the other side. This is exactly how it was hooked up originally. And now we're turning this guy from unloaded to seven eighths of a turn, which is exactly what the rebuild instruction said to do, tightening the set screw to lock in that seven eighths turn worth of tension on the spring. And basically, that's about it. We're working a few components here, just making sure everything works smoothly. And bingo, we're done.